Huntington's disease by Zach Nelson and Ann Glenn. Overview of the history of Huntington's disease. Humans have been showing symptoms of chorea, or now known as Huntington's disease, for hundreds of years. Uh, there are many theories of that the victims of the Salem witch trials in the 1690s were suffering from Huntington's disease, and these people were seen as infected by the devil. The first recorded mention of the disease was not until 1842 in a letter written by Charles Oscar Waters and published in a practice of medicine, medicine magazine. From there, there are a few different instances of people writing about the people that they are observing, showing the same size of the disease. In 1872, though, George Huntington gave the first complete description of the disease, which gained many interest by scientists from around the world. Sir, Oscar, Sir William Osler was the main scientist interested in a description from George Huntington and helped him to spread his description to gain awareness. George Huntington's road to his discovery. George Huntington was born into a family into the, in the medical field in, the, in 1850 in New York. He graduated from the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Columbia University in 1871 when he was 20 years old. In that same year, he moved to Pomeroy, Ohio to spread his observations on Korea before Meeks and Mason Academy of Medicine. Symptoms of Huntington's disease. The symptoms gradually get worse and worse over time when someone has Huntington's disease. Symptoms show up in people at the age of 30 to 50, but they can show up earlier, and this would be juvenile Huntington's disease. The early symptoms consist of difficulty concentrating, memory lapses, depression, clumsiness, and mood swings. The later symptoms are much worse. Um, these consist of involuntary jerking or fidgeting, difficulty speaking, swallowing problems. These swallowing problems can then later contribute to infections like pneumonia, and which can be deadly for someone with Huntington's disease. Um, personality changes, breathing problems, and trouble moving around. The trouble moving around then later moves to someone not being able to move around at all. Uh, they won't be able to walk around on their own, which then they'll start using a wheelchair. People living with Huntington's disease, you can usually live with Huntington's disease on your own until you start having too much trouble doing everyday tasks on your own. At that point, people usually live with a nurse or in a nursing home. Most people will need a wheelchair once symptoms get really bad as the disease progresses. Uh, the genetic basis of Huntington disease. In uh, Huntington disease, the HTT gene is mutated, and this HTT genes provide uh, provides a protein or makes a protein called Huntington, and the mutation of this disease, as you can see right here, um, it involves a DNA segment called CAG trinucleotide repeat. Basically what that is is cytosine, adenine, and guanine repeat. And this causes, uh, this makes the proteins really sticky and uh, clumpy. What happens in the cell? The generation of nerve cells in the brain can be seen, and no one really knows why or how this process starts, but it kills healthy cells, and there's a dysfunction in the mitochondria, and what this, what this means is that the mitochondria and neurons can't import essential proteins into their interior because of like an abnormal interaction of like the mutant Huntington protein and the TM23 import. And here's a picture of uh, the strands, and you can see that this is a gene with Huntington's disease, and you can see it's completely different than the non-mutated Huntington protein, and this causes like a neuron degeneration, as I said. What chromosome is the gene located on? The gene is located on the short arm of chromosome four, and this defect is dominant, meaning that anyone who inherits it, the disease from the parent, has, uh, will have a 50% chance of developing the disease in their later lifetime. And this defect causes the DNA to occur many more times than it's supposed to. Treatments and care of Huntington disease. There's no uh, treatment for Huntington's disease, like to stop or reverse the disease. But there are some medications to keep the symptoms under control. And these symptoms include 
antipsychotic drugs, antidepressants, and tranquilizers. And also, patients who exercise tend to do better than those who do not. And help can also be seen through everyday tasks. And every, by everyday tasks, I mean putting in ramps so an area can be accessible by a wheelchair, fitting in a stair lift so it's easier to get up and down flights of stairs, installing grab rails in your home to help you get around better, and um, help can also be seen through communication and alternative ways of communicating by this I mean and le electronic speech devices or picture charts. And eating is also one that could be helped by uh, kind of having uh, easier foods in the house to swallow. And here's just a chart of US Huntington's disease treatment mark market size by treatment type. And you just see that therapy plays a really big part in what is now um, with more technology and other things like that. And there's just, there's really non-generic or off-label exam questions. To start off, number one is Huntington's disease and autosomal dominant or recessive link disorder. And the answer is autosomal dominant. Number two, what age group is usually diagnosed with Huntington's disease? And once diagnosed, how much longer do they usually have to live? To answer the first question, the age group that's mostly affected is 30 to 50 year olds. And then to answer the bottom question, they usually have, once diagnosed, they have about 20 years to live.